Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, this is Engineer Fazli Karim, uh, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, Sud Peshawar, uh, and I'm your teacher for the subject of Civil Engineering Materials, uh, and the course code of the subject is CE102, uh, and this subject uh, uh, will be taught to the students of, you know, second semester uh, page 2019 uh, here on the screen uh, you can see th uh, that uh, I have you know uh, mentioned uh, to my email addresses so that you can access me through these email addresses in case if there is any difficulty uh, you can ask me any kind of question uh, even through the WhatsApp group Uh, in today's lecture, uh, we will be talking uh, about the aggregates. Uh, first of all, uh, you know, uh, I will try to let you know about uh, 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 the aggregates, uh, their types uh, uh, such as coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, and further the types of coarse aggregate and the types of fine aggregate. Uh, then we will be talking about the, the you know differences between coarse aggregate and fine aggregates uh, the qualities of aggregate uh, and then uh, we will be talking uh, about uh, you know uh, deleterious or harmful uh, materials uh, present in uh, aggregate, uh, aggregate which greatly affect uh, the quality of uh, aggregate so uh, first of all uh, i'll try to uh, you know make you understand about the uh, aggregates uh, the aggregates are uh, basically granular mineral uh, particles used either in combination uh, with various type of cementing materials to form concrete or along as road bases bake fill etc uh, some typical usage of aggregates are the Portland cement concrete, uh, the asphalt concrete, asphalt surfaces, road bases and sub bases, rail road ballast, trench bag fill, uh, you know, fill under uh, floor slabs, uh, concrete blocks, uh, water filtration beds, uh, uh, culverts, uh, bridges, uh, dams, uh, etc., etc. Uh, but here it is, uh, you know, uh, very important to uh, note that the aggregates act uh, not only as volume increasing component of the mortar or concrete, but also responsible uh, for the strength, hardness and durability of the uh, structures. So there are, uh, you know, here uh, on the screen, you can see a few terminologies such as, you know, strength. Uh, hardness and durability so I would like to let you know about these terminologies uh, as I have already told you in the previous lecture but still uh, I would like to remind you about that uh, strength is basically resistance offered by an aggregate or any kind of material to external load or force before breaking so strength is resistance uh, to external load or force before breaking uh, hardness is basically the resistance suffered by a material uh, against, you know, polishing. And durability is basically resistance to uh, environment or it's basically the resistance suffered by aggregate or any kind of material uh, against the alternate cycles of freezing, thawing, heating, cooling and uh, wetting, uh, drying. Uh, now, uh, two classes of the aggregates, uh, you know, have been mentioned on the screen, what is fine aggregate and the other are coarse aggregate. Uh, and both the classes basically differ from each other uh, in terms of, you know, definition, uh, size of the particles, uh, material, uh, sources, um, surface area, uh, and function in concrete and uh, uses. Uh, but here uh, on the screen uh, you can see that uh, the fine aggregates are basically you know 
uh, small filler materials uh, uh, used in construction and the coarse aggregate are larger size filler material in uh, construction. Uh, but it is very important to note that uh, as for as cement concrete and uh, you know mm, asphalt concrete is concerned both type of aggregates are used uh, together uh, just to assure strength or to increase the life of the uh, structure uh, the most important thing uh, for you guys uh, to learn and remember the, uh, the difference uh, remember that what's the difference uh, you know between coarse aggregate and fine aggregate so the fine aggregates are basically uh, those particles which passes through 4.75 mm or number 4 sieve and retain on number 200 or 0 0.075 mm sieve so final particles uh, are those which passes 4.75 mm mm sieve and retain or 0.075 uh, mm sieve uh, whereas the coarser aggregates are those which are retained are for uh, which are retained on 4.75 mm sieve so those which are retained on 4.75 mm sieve are called coarse aggregate but those which are passed through 4.75 mm sieve and retained on 0.075 mm sieve are called uh, uh, the fine aggregates so this is uh, you know difference is very important for all of you to uh, learn to understand and to remember uh, because if someone asks you uh, that what's the difference between coarse and uh, fine aggregate then you your answer you know uh, must be uh, you know in terms of size of particles uh, materials uh, sand, surhi, stone screenings, burnt clay, cinders, fly ash, etc. are used as fine aggregate in concrete. But the uh, broken bricks, broken stones, gravels, pebbles, clinkers uh, use as coarse aggregate in concrete. Uh, the sources of both type of aggregate are different. As you can see that the river sand or machine sand, crushed stone sand, crushed gravel sand, are the major sources of fine aggregate but dolomite aggregate crushed gravel stone uh, you know natural disintegration of rock are the main you know sources of course aggregate uh, the other difference is uh, you know major difference is surface area the surface area of fine particles is usually greater than uh, the surface area of coarse particle for example if you have a coarse particle having size of you know one inch and if you are going to break it into a number of pieces then the surface area will increase because if uh, because uh, if you are going to break it into a number of pieces then the generation of new surfaces you know uh, will takes place uh, due to which the surface area of the pieces you know uh, will be greater than uh, the surface area of a single aggregate uh, function in concrete uh, the wides between the coarse aggregates are filled up by fine aggregate and the coarse aggregate acts as an inert filler material for coarse aggregate uh, actually uh, it is very important that the coarser uh, the fine particle are always responsible for cohesion and adhesion and offer basically strength it, it basically uh, you know uh, provide interlocking property to the coarse aggregate uh, and basically gives you know strength to uh, the material or structure uses fine aggregates are used in mortar plaster concrete filling of roads pavement layers etc and the coarse aggregate are mainly used in concrete railway track ballast and asphalt roads etc etc uh, the uh, the most important thing uh, you know which you can see on the screen is basically the grain uh, size distribution uh, and for the grain size distribution uh, you know usually uh, some uh, specification or set of sieves is basically uh, required uh, and it is very important that the gradation specification for uh, highway basis concrete and asphalt mixes uh, require as I have told you that a grain uh, require a grain size distribution uh, 
uh, that will provide a dense strong mixture uh, and the actually the voids between the uh, you know coarser particles are basically filled with medium particles and the remaining voids are filled with still small particles until the smallest voids uh, you know uh, are filled with uh, small amount of fines uh, here uh, you know uh, you can see various uh, classes of the aggregate uh, starting from uh, coarser particles till you know uh, dust or clay uh, but here it is very important to discuss that often the fine content uh, uh, is required to be limited in a mix. Uh, the silt and clay particles, uh, any uh, finer clay particles, uh, finer than 75 micrometer or number 200 sieve, are relatively weak. Covering thing requires an excessive amount of cement. If fines are present as dust on large particles, they weaken the bond between uh, the cement and those particles. Fine and highway bases may lead to drainage and frost heaving problems. Also, excessive amount of fines uh, may result in weak mixture as the larger particles are not in contact with each other. The strength of the mixture would then depend only on fraction uh, between the small particles, which is much less than between large particles. For these reasons, the percentage of fine is very very important in the quality control of aggregates so it is also very important that the clay fines are more harmful than silt fines as they are much smaller in size now uh, here on the screen you can see some qualities of aggregates uh, the aggregate should be chemically inert they should not react with cement or any other aggregate or at a mixture it should possess sufficient hardness uh, to resist scratching and abrasion in the hardened state it should possess sufficient toughness uh, to bear imp impact and vibrate load what is toughness Toughness is basically the resistance offered by a material or aggregate, uh, you know, uh, uh, or just it is simply I would like to say that it's the property uh, of a material to, you know, uh, un to undergo some plastic deformation before failure. And it should be strong enough to bear compressive and tensile loads uh, in the ordinary mixture. It should be free from impurities, organic coatings and dust which will adversely affect aggregate quality. It should be capable of producing an easily workable plastic mixture on combining with cement and water. Now fine aggregates as I have told you and you need to remember that these are the particles which passes 4.75 mm r number 4 cu and are entirely retained or 0.075 mm r uh, number 200 cu uh, and most commonly used fine aggregates are the uh, you know sand uh, crust stone ash or cinder and sulfi so uh, first of all uh, uh, we will be talking about uh, sand. So it consists of small grains of silica and is formed by the disintegration of rocks caused by weather. Sand should have the following qualities. Shall be hard, durable, clean and free from, uh, you know, uh, adherent coatings and organic matters and shall not contain appreciable amount of clay shall not contain harmful impurities such as iron pyrites, alkalis, salts, coal, mica, shale or other materials which will affect you know hardening and attack reinforcement. In natural sand or crushed gravel the amount of clay, fine silt and fine dust should not be more than 4% by weight 
and and in crash tone it should not be greater than 10 percent now there are uh, you know uh, various types of uh, sands like pit or query sand uh, uh, river sand and sea sand uh, the pit or query sand uh, is basically found as deposit in soil uh, and has to be excavated out. Grains of it are, you know, generally sharp and angular. Uh, it's free from uh, organic, it is, it is required to be free from organic matter and clay. It is extremely good for use in mortar and concrete. The second one is uh, which you can see on the screen is basically river sand. It is obtained from the banks and beds of uh, rivers. And the third one is basically sea sand. Uh, it consists of the round. It consists of fine rounded, you know, grains of brown color and is collected from sea beaches. Uh, now, crust stone. Uh, it is obtained by crushing, you know, uh, query stones uh, to the particle size of sand. Stone crushed from a good quality stone is an excellent fine aggregate. By using stone crush of the same stone, a mortar matching the color of the stone masonry can be easily obtained. Ash or cinder. These are obtained in the form of fine nodules from steam locomotive or from furnaces and are finely ground with lime to have cheap yet strong mortar, uh, which is called plaque mortar. It should be free from unburnt or partially burnt coal. Surhi. Powdered broken bricks, locally called surhi, is used as fine aggregate in lime mortar. Surhi shall be prepared by finely grinding well burned good quality bricks free from unburned particles of soluble salts, pyrides, and adherent coatings of soil or silt. The maximum quantity of clay, fine silt, and fine dust present shall not exceed 5% by weight. Now we will be talking uh, about the coarse aggregate as I have told you in the beginning of the lecture that these are the particles which are retained on 4.75 mm or number 4 sieve. Commonly used coarse aggregates are the broken stones, uh, gravel or shingle, broken bricks and uh, clinker. The broken stones. Stones that are free from undesirable mineral constituents and are not soft are laminated or broken and screened to have you know broken stones for using concrete. It is an excellent aggregate Broken stones to be used for preparing concrete should be free from organic matters. It should be thoroughly washed before use. If it has an objectionable proportion of clay in it, granite, sandstone and close grain limestone are well suited for the purpose. It is used for making concrete in the construction of roads and on the railway track. Gravel or shingle. These are obtained from river beds, quarries, and seashores. Being hard and durable, these are extensively used as an aggregate in the preparation of concrete. Clay and salts are the common impurities which should be removed before use by washing when locally available. It is used in place of stone ballast or, you know, as a broken bell, broken. Uh, uh, stone. Uh, the next one is a uh, broken bricks. 
Broken bricks is used as coarse aggregate in lime concrete. It places where aggregate from natural resources is either not available or is expensive. It is a reasonably good substitute for stone aggregate when well burned good bricks are available in sufficient quantity. It can be used at places where lower strength is required or where it is exposed to less severe condition of service. Uh, the last one is clinker. These are the byproducts of burning of coal. Because of the presence of excessive sulfur in them, they corrode steel and as such these should not be used for RCC work or for encasing beams and pillars. They constitute a cheap and high material and are conveniently used for internal concrete blocks or slab partitions not carrying any load. When used with cement, they cause considerable expansion. Blocks of concrete made with breeze or clinker could easily be nailed. Uh, here you can see some uh, deleterious substances in aggregate or you can see some harmful materials in aggregates. The aggregate should not contain any harmful material like clay, organic impurities, alkali, iron pyrides, shale, coal, mica, soft fragments and seashells. In such quantities is to impair the strength and durability of the concrete. In case of RCC, the aggregates should not in addition contain any such matter that may attack the reinforcement also the aggregate should not be chemically reactive with cement thank you very much this is end of the lecture